Hello, my name is River, River Yo. I'm a nurse and GAPS practitioner, and um, we're back. <laughs> Took a few weeks off there because I did have a sudden influx of clients um, wanting to do something with uh, GAPS in the new year, so now we're back. I wanted to finish the trilogy that I had been working on um, of the three reasons, big main reasons why I left the mainstream nursing idea of what nursing looks like to do more of the food-based medicine um, approach. And the third and final and most important one, um, well, they're all important, that I want to talk about today is um, going from the pharmacy to the farm. So this, de this video is dedicated to all my farmers that um, most of which I've had the pleasure of meeting face to face and um, having even having some deep conversations with a few of them. <laughs> and uh, I'm so, so grateful for their impact on my life and on our family's health and um, our family's meal times, which is what life is all about. <laughs> the deliciousness of uh, just coming home to a warm meal, um, waking up to a warm meal is just, it's like the back, it's like the setting for that went under, it's like the setting in which life happens. So um, yeah, this is dedicated to you, family farmer, pasture to fork, um, and in my early days, utter milk, that's, uh, those are some good folks. I couldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for people like that on the front lines of health with their hands in the soil um, and uh, with the animals out there on God's good earth growing amazing food. So thank you so much for growing food the way God intended with a lot of ingenuity but without all of the um, chemicals and and harmful practices that create poor health in the food, in, our, in the animals, and in the humans that eat all of that stuff. So, um, all that being said, uh, the more I learned about food and the power of food to change um, someone's health, completely turn it around, the more I started to realize um, if I was looking at a client, a patient's case in the chart, I could see very clearly, ooh, if I could speak to this patient face to face, I would say, oh, you should really try some sauerkraut. I think it would really help you <laughs> or something like that. And um, instead, I didn't have a position in which I was getting a lot of patient to patient FaceTime. And I could just watch their story progress by just checking on their chart um, when I was doing uh, as a part of my job, which was to go through their chart and take notes and update the insurance companies. Um, yeah, I could just see how their situation continued to get worse and worse and more meds and this med and try a new med and another med. And um, it was really hard for me to see because I knew that those meds were not addressing the root of the problem. They were addressing the symptoms, just like a Band-Aid slapped on top. Um, and worse than a Band-Aid because it, in many cases it would actually make it worse. So um, obviously there is a place for pharmaceutical medicine. If you get into a car accident and I don't know, something crazy happens, you go to the ER for an emergency, awesome. Glad we have pharmaceuticals. The way that we produce them, I have some ethical dilemma with, some strong ethical dilemma, especially lately. They've uh, been, yeah. But that being said, but most of the people in the hospital are not there because of an emergency. They're not there because they had a sudden terrible infection. Uh, they're not there because they got an infected wound somewhere or because they even broke a bone or um, any of those reasons. But they're there because of a chronic issue that came from lifestyle practices. And in the West, that just means living in this sick environment and living in this culture and by the terms that this culture has developed over time, which is eating a lot of processed um, seed oils or which are high in PUFAs, if you know what that is. Um, 
uh, Chelsea, the uh, Christian nutritionist says, poofas make you poofy. <laughs> so if you're ever wondering what is a good oil and what is a healthy oil versus a not healthy oil, look at the poofas. Poofa is bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, eating everything that's, everything is filled with these oils. Everything is pumped up with processed soya, which is G, uh, genetically modified to absorb a ton of crappy chemicals to make it impervious from any, uh, <laughs> not just impervious from any bug or um, blight or infection in the land, but also impervious to us and incredibly undigestible. Um, yeah, it will may keep you alive, but it will also keep you real sick. <laughs> if there's a lot of soy, processed soy in your food supply. Um, and the more that we go towards a plant-based mantra, the more we um, leave real meat behind and introduce more and more and more of these soy products, which um, when prepared traditionally, as in, you know, my husband is, has Chinese heritage, prepared traditionally are fine in their original form, but prepared in the way that we prepare them, they're incredibly harmful and detrimental to health. Thankfully, it seems like they've finally started pulling the soy out of infant formula, um, and that's good because oh, who ever thought that you could make infant formula out of processed soy? I have no idea, but um, it's a bad. That was a, that was a bad plan. If you want to learn more about that, check out the Weston and Christ Foundation. But personally, um, I tried several pharmaceuticals myself. Uh, for my own health situation. And uh, I tried some really strong antibiotic type things uh, for my acne. I tried some antidepressants at one time because I had some weird neurological symptoms like standing up and fainting and unexplainable problems that were just kind of under an umbrella we call autoimmune, which is like before if someone had a weird diagnosis that we couldn't really diagnose, we'd just say, ah, oh, it's all in your head. But after a while, more and more and more people were showing up with strange things we couldn't diagnose. So we just put it under this category of autoimmune and we're still exploring what does that mean? How is the immune system involved in all these ways? Um, is it the immune system's problem or is the immune system trying to mitigate um, the toxicity in our body? That's kind of where I'm leaning these days. But anyways, um, yeah, food is the best medicine. And um, I love that now in the way that I work, I don't send people to their local pharmacy, but I send them to their local farm. And uh, the nutrient density of the food from a local regenerative farm using healthy practices could be a hundred times that of whatever you get at your local shop, right? And this um, means even organic. A lot of organic stuff could be grown in hydroponics and water only, not in the soil, or grown in a bucket on, on a field that was sprayed with glyphosate, but there was no glyphosate sprayed directly on the bucket. And it's like technically organic. <laughs> So there's a lot of weird practices in the organic um, label. The organic label is not very um, reliable anymore. And just because even if it was really chemical free, that chemical free does not equal nutrient density. Um, so you could eat like one egg from a local fr farm fresh situation where that chicken ate a bunch of bugs and like chickens should and food scraps and maybe some healthily grown um, chicken feed that wasn't sprayed with stuff and came from healthy ground, healthy soil that was nutrient dense, that one egg could contain the nutrition that you would need to eat two dozen eggs of if you just went to a local shop, right? Um, there's been real like chemistry studies done on egg yolks, on meat, and different products from healthy farms, and they, the amount of uh, vitamins and minerals and amino acids that are in there that we really need 
are way more than if you just Google how much folic acid is in an egg yolk and just see what does the USDA say. When they did their test on an average egg, whatever that is, what was the amount? And um, yeah, you can listen to Joel Salatin. He's a great farmer. Uh, he talks about this and a lot of universities in his area seem to have done um, some studies on his farm. Um, and it's just super cool. Obviously it doesn't make any sense to do some chemistry studies on every single farm, but I think doing these spot tests um, says a lot to the value in how we grow our food and um, That's right. the power of that food to help us to heal. And for me, um, I took all the processed food out of my life when I did GAPS, the GAPS diet. Um, eat all my sauces and dressings. That's right. All anything in a box or a package or a frozen pre-mixed anything was gone. I just used seasonings and salt and pepper, um, herbal seasonings, and um, I had to learn how to do it myself. And um, it was a lot of work. It was a big learning curve, but. Um, and it took one thing at a time, just learning how to make soup, learning how to make yogurt, learning how to make probiotic veggies. And over time, I've refined those skills and I'm still always adding new skills. But in that journey, um, I got all my ingredients from local farms as much as possible. In the winter, sometimes there wasn't. Um, I haven't sourced a local winter CSA yet at this time. And so like, uh, I'll get the organic stuff from the store or from Misfits Market, which is a little cheaper. At this, um, and that'll do. But as much as possible, I would invest money into healthy meats and milk and eggs and oil and produce. And um, I have a husband who is very, very budget conscious. <laughs> And uh, he's a very simple guy. And even when he made a lot of money, he would like bring rotisserie chicken and rice to work when everyone else would eat out every single lunch. He's very frugal. And I really, really love that about him. <laughs> um, and it has served us well, especially in these days where we're not making bougie money anymore um, in the finance system. But anyway, uh, hopefully he doesn't mind that I shared that. <laughs> but. Um, I sat down with him and explained how, especially as a nurse, I saw with my eyes and held with my hands people who spent their entire life savings and went into tens of thousands of dollars of debt um, in the last 20, 30 years of their life because of terrible health. And um, I've, I, see it in earlier and earlier and earlier as well. I see it in children who are so sick. They're going to the doctor all the time. They're all on some kind of med of one kind or another or popping on and off of antibiotics and um, requiring short hospital stays every couple of years or, um, and the, the, price, the cost adds up so much, especially with chronic conditions because in Western medicine, when you have a chronic condition, most cases either the doctor will say you're gonna have to relearn how to live that this is your new normal and take this med every day and this is what you have to do this is all you can do or if it's a good doctor they'll say um you know you have to take this regimentedly as much as you can and if you wanted to get off of this you really have to change your lifestyle um unfortunately most doctors <laughs> Well, any doctor that goes through a normal MD or even DO program are not trained in like, what does that mean or look like lifestyle practices? And uh, there's a lot of politics around what is a healthy lifestyle practice. I really recommend um, a lot of the materials that come out of the Weston A. Price Foundation on this. And I also really, um, Chelsea Blackbird <clears throat> has great information on like, what is healthy anyway? like. The, a lot of what is recommended by the USDA and the training program and registered dietitians does not necessarily line up with what's going on in the latest research. So anyways, um, yeah, uh, the hospitals are filled with people with chronic, terrible conditions. 
There's a ton of long-term rehab facilities everywhere. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of new medical offices and pharmaceutical offices are just popping up everywhere. And that's because people are getting sicker and more of us are sicker more of the time. And uh, it's like, if you just ask any random person on the street, hey, how are you doing? How's your health? Uh, are you on any meds? Everyone is feeling sick in some way. They're not sleeping well. They have headaches. They have back aches. We're generally kind of like decrepit. And in the old days, people would say, oh, I'm just getting old. That's the only reason. It's just some ambiguous aging. Oh, excuse you. But um, as we've seen these chronic conditions occur more and more often in younger and younger and younger um, people, even little kids with rheumatoid arthritis, obviously not because of aging <laughs> and uh, it's more likely that it is prolonged exposure to toxic chemicals and um, a lack of nutrition and basically uh, we're not starving but we are nutritionally deficient in so many areas and that causes these chronic conditions to manifest themselves um, in earlier and earlier ages before maybe it would take most of your life before you would deplete your nutrition so much or become exposed to toxins so much that you, these things would show up. But now it's happening in even babies. And uh, I could talk about that much more, but I won't because <laughs> it's depressing. And uh, I used to go to work and scroll through case studies of these patients that were having a terrible time and just like, I, my job was to call them and try to get back in touch with them and get them to come to the doctor again more, even though they'd given up on the doctor because the doctor couldn't help them. <laughs> that was my job. It was basically a hopeless situation. And um, I, I used to cry. I used to cry at, as I was working remotely or even in the office. And I would just like, if my husband was also working remotely or something, or home over lunch, like I would just like hold him and cry and he would hold me <laughs> because it is so devastating. The terrible state of the health of so many, it's really overwhelming. And um, it's very overwhelming when you feel like you have nothing to offer. There's no hope. Um, you know, in the old days, um, spirituality and healing were hand in hand and I mean in the Bible um, there's scriptures that say oh if you struggle with this disease go to the priest and have him anoint you with oil and do this offering and um, I think that a lot of us have dismissed that as like oh that was just superstition that um, there was some spiritual reason that somebody was struggling with their health but I think that without realizing it, we have treated our newer versions of medicine, like pharmaceutical medicine, with the same spiritual awe that w people in the past had given to a priest or some kind of spiritual leader um, looking for healing. We kind of look up to them with like, you have the answer. You must have the answer. And when they don't have the answer, it's like we can't accept it. And so we go to another doctor, another doctor, another doctor, another doctor, another specialist, refer to a different specialist. And maybe like the best in the world if we travel to another city to meet another doctor. <laughs> As if somehow they will have the answer. And um, uh, ultimately, um, humans, we don't have all the answers. But there, there is some wisdom that I believe God has hidden in creation, in nature, in food. Um, I do think he has revealed some amazing things to scientists who have developed... Whoa, that's a good part, baby. Who have developed um, some medications that are really helpful in certain situations. But I think that there is a need for balance. And most people that I talk to um, who don't know much about food as medicine say to me, oh, well, if there's a natural thing, I would want to try that first before trying a medication. 
and I'll say, well, um, who are you going to look to to suggest such a natural alternative? And he said, oh, well, I'll just go to more testing and ask my doctor. And um, I say to them, well, that's a nice idea, but that doctor likely was not trained in anything alternative. He was trained in pharmaceuticals ever since the Rockefellers, you know, changed over all of the medical schools to be primarily pharmaceutical, you know, education centers. And they're really good at that. They're good at the pharmaceuticals, but they aren't good at much else. So you wouldn't go to a chiropractor looking for nutrition help necessarily. And you wouldn't go to a nutritionist looking for some antibiotics. So why would you go to a doctor to look for nutrition and healthy living advice? Uh, they're not the end all be all. We all need each other. So anyway, all that to say, my new job, besides being Hosanna's mom, is to help walk people through a food-based approach to healing and sealing the gut lining, to rebooting and refreshing gut health in order to decrease the toxicity in our bodies, better nourish our bodies, and um, with maybe a few food-based supplements, um, depending on the person, you can reverse an incredible amount of disease and disorder. It's incredible. So that's what I do now, and um, I write prescriptions to the farm, not to the pharmacy. And uh, my local clients and um, people that I know, we will take turns picking up from the farm uh, to make it more convenient for each other because it is worth driving and to go pick it up because it cannot be compared so that is the rest of that story if you have any questions or comments or ideas for future videos feel free to post them below i think i'm gonna get back on the youtube wagon um in a more regular sense this starting this week so have a great week and i'll see you next time bye Thank <laughs> you.